and it takes it takes these doors out in like fucking seconds like why would like if you once you see something like that um obviously i think that's a very uh, i think it would be better for swat teams versus you know i won't say it, there's no use militarily but it's swats very specific it's from point a to point b versus i'm moving through the jungle i'm moving through really harsh terrain very harsh weather where that point. shit like that can get fucking destroyed before you can get on target so i'm not sure how much i would trust in that <laughs> per se welcome to uncensored tactical where our goal is to talk about training tactics and more without being limited by red tape or a sterile bureaucratic environment so that we can bring you value and insight in a way that other organizations just plain can't. Cool, jumping into the show. I just got two very short pieces of housekeeping. The first one is we don't have any new Patreon subscribers since last week, so no shout outs, uh, but that is a huge help even at just a $2 level. Patreon.com backslash U-T-A-C is where you can help support the show on that. And the only other c- content I have for housekeeping is... If you want a high security dog, high quality security dog, and high quality training, you can check out fortresscanine.com. That is the only affiliate that I have right now. Uh, cool. That's it. We got Sky Pirate here. You can introduce yourself, say hello real quick, and then we'll get ready to rock. Hey, guys. All right. Hey, how's it going, guys? Sky Pirate Actual here. And you've been on at least one other episode with me, correct? Correct. Let me pull that up. You utac.io is the shortcut for our website for my website and today we're going to be talking about three lines of gear with some people that do this stuff on a daily basis me and sky pirate brian freedom holsters okay i might have to scroll back two or three pages for you that's all good let me take a look back before christmas okay there you go Episode 153, me and you talking about lockpicking. Got it. I'll put that in the show notes. So uh, for those of you that do have my book, my tactical lockpicking book out there, you'll know about this concept, which is three lines of gear. But it's not my original concept. I'm not some super genius. I'm just pretty good at picking up skill sets. Uh, The first line, second line, third line gear. Let's do a quick rundown. And you, of course, are familiar with this too. This is very heavy military terminology. And it goes way, way back. Like... Mm-hmm. Absolutely. First line gear so, is the stuff that you have on you. Super yeah. simple. And Super that's simple. The stuff that you have on you, I guess, to be an addendum would be while you're slick, meaning not a backpack, not a piece of, usually not a piece of body armor, not a purse, you know, something like that. Something where you're, if you're just walking around, you have it attached to your body. Uh, for lock picking, that's generally what's in your wallet, what's on your keychain what's on your standard belt. Uh, but we could expand some of those things, which I'm sure you probably know. If you're wearing a gun belt nine to five for your normal job, that becomes your first line gear as well. Yeah. I like to call body armor kind of a 1.5 line gear. So <laughs> yeah. Like one and a half. It's on you when it's on you, but you mm-hmm. can often doff it and throw it in the back seat of your car or in a trunk. Or if you're on operation, it's really restricted in space. You can take it off, set it in the corner so it's kind of an on on again off again line of gear. So I I don't when I plan I don't say let me put all of my stuff on my upper armor. That way I have it. Well shit, well as soon as you take that upper armor off, you lose it all. You don't have it anymore. Yep. <laughs> we also I think I want to circle back to um fanny packs being kind of a 1.5 line gear or for yeah. females uh purses will probably apply to that. You don't you don't often carry your purse everywhere. Sometimes it'll stay in your car, or stay in your house, but uh, for chicks or for very progressive dudes, uh, purse could also apply. <laughs> I, do, I do not judge. I think they call that uh, me- metrosexual. No, I don't think metrosexuals even fall into that. <laughs> a merce. For pers- yeah, yeah, merce. A satchel, oh, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> what, what's he saying? <laughs> and he had a Jones Wars one. <laughs> hey, well, you know what? He's probably the only one that can get away with that. <laughs> oh, man. We should bring we should bring that back in style. The satchel. The satchel. What else do you got for it. what else do you got for first line gear? Uh, okay. So uh my first line gear is actually pretty uh there's nothing super duper special about it. So um the nice part is so I have the what is it, the uh covert companion from 
who is that from? Uh, Covert Instruments. So that's the cool part. It kind of condensed a lot of my uh, other bypassing tools into one really small piece of gear. So it actually, it shrunk my my carry gear by, I, I'd say a solid 20, 30%. So instead oh, okay. of having to carry, yeah. So normally I'll just carry, um, I'll carry like my regular picks in my pouch and then I'll have um, like some cone picks and then I'll have, I, I have a whole a bunch of a myriad of different things that just kind of like made my shit very, very bulky. So, mm-hmm. um, the covert companion itself has the, uh, cone picks. It has a decoder. It has, um, shims for uh, not, not shims, but the, uh, it's like shim stock for bypassing dial locks. Um, it has wafer, key, uh, wafer keys, jigglers, and it also mm-hmm. has a couple of wave rakes on there too. So, that is that is a badass piece of gear right there. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Can I cuss on your show? I don't. I don't want to get you like. <laughs> Are you kidding? All right. It's, it's called yeah. uncensored. Yeah, yeah. Just making sure. I want to get anybody demonetized if they're put this going to YouTube or some shit. <laughs> so uh, that's pretty much it for like what I'll carry on my. Per- oh, actually, I'm lying. I have my wallet as well. So my wallet, I'll keep uh, the multi pass from lockpick tools and then i'll also have uh the sparrows hall pass that'll be that'll be exactly what i carry on me from like 100 percent of the day pretty much lockpick tools multi-pass let me pull that up i'm going to try and put all these in the show notes today so it's going to be lots of links on the source article multi-pass ah i see that's for latches and i don't yep. do i have one of those i think i got some in some of my previous orders, but I have not played with it yet. I have used the one from, uh, is it Stately Asset or is it? Um, yes, yeah, Stately Asset has one, and then Fortac Five has one too. Yeah, I think I have one of that, one of the two of them, uh, and they have a they have a failure point that from the design it's kind of weak at one of the pull points. So I've had it. Yeah, I had it just break on the first run. Oh uh, wow! I have not tried the multi pass yet, but I'll get some on my next order. I love the hall <laughs> pass. Love it. Yeah. I, I I had a small issue with the hall pass. I'm not sure if anyone else had the issue. Hmm. Um, for the it was the ramping effect of the uh, of the like pretty much the pull point on the on the actual uh, tool itself. Hmm. Um, there wasn't enough grabbing onto the actual latch itself. So when I pulled like really hard, sometimes it would like ramp up, slip off. Yeah, you know what I got so, for that? Um, <laughs> a traveler's hook? <laughs> no, 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 no. The hall pass. So I use it. So to prevent that from happening, I know this is not video, this is an audio podcast, but um, when I push the hall pass into the frame and I drop it down onto the latch, Mm -hmm. there's not a lot to grab onto. So when you pull straight back, it does. It kind of slips up and off. What I do is I'll push my push point at the top. Like if I'm coming in on top, on top of the frame, on top of the latch, and I slide it down onto the latch, I'll take Mm -hmm. the bottom corner of the hall pass and push it up towards the top corner that's touching the door frame. And it will, it will wedge the bottom uh, part out, so it so stays it actually, in the door jam. Gotcha. So I actually push the hall pass in and angle it up, and that kicks the nose out and it keeps it stuck in place. So, gotcha. Angle point like that. You can try that. So for the guys that hat were, you know, maybe they followed my my move before I figured it out just now what you told me. <laughs> so what I actually did was I actually took a grinder and I actually cut mm-hmm. into the, the half, that half crescent moon shape and I actually made more of a 90 degree angle in it. So that way, when I drop it down behind the latch, it actually, it has more of an actual tooth. So I actually cut into it a little bit. So it kind of has like, um, almost like a small diamond shape coming out of the edge. So it like grips right into the, uh, gotcha. the latch. So let's see if you can see this here. So once I get it over the latch, we're doing a little video presentation here, but you can do a post on this if you want. So I'll set it in and I'll push this bottom part of the handle up towards that top notch and it it creates a, come on, creates a lever where it levers out that latch. Nice. Here, I actually have my hall pass as well since we're doing a little bit of shit. Oh yeah, take a look. (laughs) <laughs> so here's my hall pass right here all this dirty goodness so i cut that 90 degree into there uh-huh. and there's still there's still a little bit of swedge in there so i can still grip behind it and then uh it makes it just a little bit that a little bit easier can i actually get the entirety of this tooth behind the actual latch 
Um, I know we're so still that, talking about first line gear, but uh, another tool from Sparrows that I've had to adjust is their Molly Gym. Do you have one of those? I do not. I have an, a regular Slim Gym right here, but I don't have the actual Molly Gym. So their Molly Gym has a weird kind of triangle point at the end that me and all of my students, we have not been able to get that to work organically in a door jam. So we we just cut off the back end of that um, triangle formation at the tip of the Molly Gym. And we use it really similarly to a traveler hook. So it's just like a straight right end coming out. Mm. And I'll put a link in for that too, just so people know what we're talking about since we're spending that time on it. Yeah. Bypass tools. That's from sparrowslockpicks.com. I got to write down an email about that. All of my fucking students, we all cut the edge of that tool off and it works fabulously after that. That's what cool. That's, that's yeah. First line gear, the stuff you have on you. Uh, I I like keeping my keychain set really slim, so I move a lot of stuff from my keychain into my wallet, and I tape a lot of stuff to the back of my credit cards. Mm. Uh, some items like that are I used to when I was in law enforcement. I used to when I was a patrol cop, I would put jigglers and a couple other items onto my keychain because mm-hmm. that was pretty easy to either clip onto my belt or to throw into like a side pocket. Um, yeah, I use it when I needed it. It made sense to have a larger keychain. Uh, I, don't, I guess I'm just getting older. I like to be more comfortable. So I don't like having that big, <laughs> jagged, like, ring of keys with odd shapes on it shoved into my pocket all the time. So I literally yeah. have, I have a key fob and my house key, and that's it. Um, <laughs> so I take my jigglers and I tape them to the back of my credit card with electrical tape. Scotch tape yeah. rips too easy. It's hard to get up. Duct tape is way too sticky. So I found that electrical <laughs> tape works awesome for that. Nice. I got to start yeah. more of those sets and getting them out too. And my online shopping cart has to get up and running hopefully this month. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, just the, I don't know. I'm not sure if you've actually seen the covert instruments, uh, there it's, it's pretty, it, that's exactly what it is. It's pretty much a key fob full of fucking tools, which is f- absolutely awesome. Um, it even has a loiter on there as well. So if you want to like Lloyd or fucking slip latches, it has one of those on there too. I was actually mm-hmm. thoroughly impressed by the sheer amount of gear that it has on there. So it actually like waves out. And this is the fully loaded version. So you have the jigglers, you have your wafer keys, you have the uh, bypass tool for uh, unshielded locks. This is the slip latches. And then on the other end, you have all your comb picks, um, a little, a few more jigglers and then some wave rates. Mm-hmm. So super awesome. duper small as it comes in. That's what she said. Got it. <laughs> Man, this whiskey is strong. I forgot to say in the beginning, but I got Maker's 46 here. Maker. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, I, we used to have like little airplane bottles of booze at my grandparents' house, and I would always rip off these little edges of this wax that's on top of the bottle. Yeah. And I remember just grandparents would be playing cards, at the table, at the dining room table, and I'd be sitting under the table and peeling off the wax from the little mini alcohol bottles. <laughs> and I don't remember if I got in trouble, quote unquote, but I do remember sipping back a couple tiny little bottles of Maker's oh, when I was a kid. Ah, uh, that's the story of an alcoholic right there, if I ever heard one. And I turned out just fine. Look at me. <laughs> Disdain right, second, for authority. Second line gear. Let's talk about that. So long, long, long story short, that's your go bag. Something yep. you can grab and take with you. Uh, so go bag. So I actually just kind of reconfigured mine uh, recently after I got a uh, an Everly stock uh, F5. So it has like multiple slim compartments. So I actually just picked up a. Uh, can you spell that? Door. Uh, oh, Everly stock. Uh, it's E B E R L Y S T O C K. F what? F5. Five switchblade. Yep, that's it. Let's get that up. Oh damn, that's big. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there's a so I usually have that. I'll swap that out with my uh, like my assault pack. So they 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 issue us stuff for, obviously for work, mm-hmm. um, and that's a slimmer profile than the thing they give us. So okay, cool, and that's yeah. good. That's a great example. So I teach people a baseline, which is here's what I recommend to get started. And I have a small one. I have a do I have? There's so many Chinese variants of this now, but it's 
I mean, yeah. just about the size of a, of a high school yeah. kid's lunchbox. <laughs> um, and they have cheap versions on Amazon. They're like 20 bucks. So if you're yeah. buying multiple packs, which I do as a professional, I have a one that stays in my personal car and one that I use to travel and teach with. Mm. Um, those are good, but I'm quickly running out of space with that. Yeah. So that makes perfect sense that yours, when I said, oh my God, it's big. That's good though, because you have a purpose for it. You have a reason for it. It makes sense to do that. Um, so I teach people a baseline and then I don't do the hard, fast rule. Like you can't use a big bag for this. That's stupid. Yeah. Use fuck, use as big of a bag as you want. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think justification is everything. It's all like, obviously I'm not, what are you using it for? Like right now I'm not worried about being fucking sneaky. I'm using it as the extension of my breaching abilities. So that is, it's okay for that to be big unless it's like obviously slowing me down and stuff like that. So um, as far as for what's inside there, uh, I have the, the under the door tool from uh, Coastal Fire, Coastal oh, Fire Training. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. I just, I just got that, um, I think, two days ago. Because my original one I brought overseas with me actually got lost on the way back. So <laughs> I had to buy a new one. Um, so I have my UDT in there. I'll have a Slim Jim in there. Uh, oftentimes, I'll throw the Ignition USA uh, C-Rat in there. Mm-hmm. Um those are, um, I do not recommend those for people unless they're doing this uh, professionally, like as a full time fucking job. Those sea rats are expensive and they're bulky and they're yeah. fucking heavy. They're heavy but, as fuck. Oh. So they're good tools, but just like everything, know what you're using it for. That's all. Yes, absolutely. Like for the most part, you, just about everything on there. What I like about that the most uh, is the fact that you can you can you can wedge and set doors that are actually hung properly mm-hmm. and you can set them far enough to be voided. So that is the, that is what I love about that most. Oh, yep. And so you have the titanium. Yep. I have a, yep. uh, for those listening on audio, cause there is only an audio portion of this. It's a, it looks like a little wooden triangle that you shove under the door to kind of wedge a door open, but it's aluminum. Uh, firefighters use it quite a bit. That's one of the newest uh, additions to my second line gear. So if you're, if you go to slip a simple latch, if the door frame's big enough that you can put in your hook tool or your, your, uh, I, I always call it the fucking Carolina roller after Devin Olaf explains it on his videos. What, what did you, uh, traveler's hook. That's it. Traveler's hook. Yeah. If Carolina roller. <laughs> yeah. He calls it that. He says it's uh, that's one of the names for it. I think I'm not going to, I'm not going to watch six hours of his videos to find that term again, but I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah. he made a reference to it being called that. Um, that, and I honestly don't care what it's called, but take your traveler's hook. If you can't get it into the door frame because the fitment's too tight, you just take a wedge and you, you yep. shove that door and the frame apart and you can get your traveler's hook in there. However, if it's, if it has a dead latch mechanism next to your latch and it's installed correctly, or if it's, if it's close to correct, you can bypass that by bumping the door in farther or pulling the door shut farther. And that will allow you to disengage that dead latch mechanism. Yeah. The third step would be there is a dead latch mechanism. It is installed absolutely correctly. So you can't bump the door shut more or pull the door towards you more to get that dead latch mechanism to slip into your latch strike plate. If you can't do those things, you can often still take a wedge and spread the door away from the door yeah. uh, door frame. And that will sometimes give you enough room where that dead latch mechanism extends, letting mm-hmm. you put that traveler hook in there and get through that door. Wow, yeah. a, lot of talk, a lot of talking. <laughs> yeah no that seemed that was the uh i would say there's two methods for gov- uh, i don't know if i should say that yeah for government buildings there's usually two the, the two go-to methods obviously is the udt because of fire code Love and both, yep it's it's so most of the time it's super duper predictable I'm like all right sick federal government building they have to have certain types of doors or the copper box like, Yep, or the co- oh yeah, and that's another thing that I keep in my other my uh, my second line as well is a fucking rare earth magnet. The ma- the and magneto. Oh yeah, that ho- that that thing's strong too. I have for years. I've been on the lookout for uh, Kaba doors. I've sent a magneto to a buddy of mine that was active uh, in law enforcement and military. He got it to work like f- on fifty percent of his tries. He tried like five wow. or six Kabas, and it worked on like three of them. Wow. I've tried it on dozens and dozens of Kaba locks, and I have 0% effectiveness with it. <laughs> so 
again, know what to use it for and know what the yeah. failure point is and the percentage of likelihood is. So that you're, mm-hmm. when you're wargaming and you go, oh, that's a Kaba lock, we're in. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a Kaba lock, there's a chance that we're in. And that chance is about yes. 10%. <laughs> if not, what's our next step? Right. Exactly. And I think that's uh, that's a huge part of it too, is uh, the Magneto actually did not work for me in Wilds Rivers East because that's all I used to see too. I see tons of Kaba 2000s. All of them. I was like sick. I got a fucking thick ass, you know, rare earth magnet. Should fucking pop this thing open. And a, nope, wasn't the case. <laughs> I got a pop quiz question for you. There's a couple right answers. If that right. magneto doesn't work on a Kaba lock, what's your next try? Uh, so I did get that list from you and from uh, Sear Pick. The mm-hmm. uh, combinations uh, for the uh, for the doors, but a lot of the times they most people don't even actually reset the password from what it comes with so if it's like four zeros and it'll still be four zeros and so there's that which is terrible <laughs> um i'll give you credit for that we'll, we'll call it manufacturer default code yeah sure we'll give you credit for that what's what's the other step though uh the i don't know if this is going to be the right one for what i have experienced so far is that these are usually placed on doors with door frames that are either composite or they're wood framed and I can usually just <laughs> I can do the same steps I do with any door, which I can just slip it after it Absolutely. Causes slip the latch. Yep. Your bonus points. You got both answers I was looking for. Nice. This is not your this is not your first time, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's and that's exactly why you're here. Yeah. <laughs> mm. God that <clears throat> whiskey is you're putting it back. Dude. I, I'm trying. I'm actually, I'm struggling. I have cut my drinking way back. I don't even drink with all my recordings now. That's wow. what I used to drink anyways was once a week when I record. So my head's already spinning. Ugh. But not, not in a bad way. I'm just kind of kicking loose. Yeah. All right. So we're talking second line gear. I don't keep vehicle reach tools or an underdoor tool in my second line gear because I don't, I teach professionally, but I don't respond professionally to um mm. lock lockouts so it makes enough sense for me to keep those long tools in the trunk of my car and mm. to have a smaller second line gear bag that i do put some vehicle airbags in there um yeah so that if i know i'm going to a vehicle i'll grab my go bag and i'll grab a reach tool um okay. or if i know i'm going to a door that has a handle on the back then i'll go back to my car and i'll grab my under door tool um, yeah if I, I mean, depending on the lockout. So it's easier to just grab that bag and just to keep it small. So that's my reasoning for it. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, and the other nice thing too is, I mean, it's it's great to have a couple airbags, a couple wedges, and a couple different oh, yeah. reach tools for your vehicles. But it's, 100%. I think it's one step forward, one step back. If you just throw that shit in your trunk and you go, oh, a vehicle entry. Well, if you're not parked right next to the other locked vehicle, you have to go back to your trunk, open it. <laughs> come back with all this stuff in your arms, like cradling it like a baby. And you're like, I hope my airbag doesn't fall. Oh, I dropped one. Oh shit. So I, that's why I keep a bunch of my airbags and vehicle wedges in my second line gear bag, even though I don't have the, the reach tool inside of it. Yeah. (laughs) Creating a, cradling it like a baby that hit home. I've been that guy. (laughs) (laughs) And again, it's good having tools, but I mean, and I write about in the book too. Um, Imagine like an EMS guy showing up and like you're bleeding out on the street and they go, oh, we need this tool and that tool and this bandage and that bandage. And they run back to the truck and they're opening drawers and they're like, let me grab one of these. And they put it in their arms. Like, I'm going to grab one of those. No, <laughs> grab the gear bag, bring it to scene, set it down, take your items out and use them. Like It's like a fucking buffet. <laughs> <laughs> so we should do it no different. There's a perfectly good reason for that. Um, yeah. I've still never met anybody that teaches these field applications. Um, you now. Hopefully, will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm about to say I still teach this level two for so. Uh, but a lot of these, um, a lot of, I mean, man, it's a small world out there for people to teach entry skill sets. Um, mm-hmm. Even at the it, at the high end and the low end, it's just it's just such a such a. I don't know what's the word. It's like a isolated field of very few people. Mm-hmm. And everyone knows each other <laughs> to yeah. some degree, or knows of each other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm sure we'll be coming back to first and second line gear. Let's move on to third line gear. Let's let's talk about some of that. You can start right. while I uh, try and swallow down this. Yeah, yeah, man. Finish that off. My man raised no bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. So for a third line, so I'll equate third line to like my vehicle. So uh, that's that's my essential third line for uh, for like for every day. So for that, uh, I have a compartment and I'm actually building parts in the truck right now to retain some of the gear that I'm putting in there. So that goes to <laughs> was that rough? Oh, yeah, I'm struggling. <laughs> um, so that will go with my heavy heavy duty fucking bolt cutters mm-hmm. that's this I, I hate to say that so when it goes it comes to my car i'm probably getting a very very close to just doing a destructive entry so that's like where most of that shit is so um that'll go for my heavy duty bolt cutters that'll go with my halligan tool uh that'll go for the sledge so pretty much like all those heavy duty items that's that's like my strict third line gear or if I'm actually working, it'll be like my one and a half because I carry breaching tools on my body as well. So breaching shotgun or or uh, mm-hmm. or, Huli, or a Halligan tool. So mm-hmm. that's uh, that's pretty much what I do for that. Uh, I'll also keep the extra uh, freaking air shims. Uh, what else do I normally carry in the car? I actually carry shims too because I actually I was actually kind of surprised at how many locks I was able to actually open overseas. Uh, I was like, I, I, and, I, and it was weird too because I didn't figure it out until after I opened the lock. I was what like, let me see shims? You mean padlock shims? Padlock shims. I was, I was so fucking surprised because it, it's such a hit or miss with those. Um, especially like combination locks, that's a hit or miss. But usually now I can tell. So you can tell like the cheap shit padlocks that'll fucking that you can definitely use them on versus the ones that are a little bit more solid built that you cannot use them on. So obviously that just comes with uh, you know pain and repetition or just experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what else? I have like uh, hammers and shit are too that I've used for destructive entry. So commercial um, latch shims are great too. They're a little bit I they're good for your push doors when you have to reach around and you kind of snake through the door frame to get to that latch. Mm. Uh, the, the commercial ones are much bigger than a credit card and they give you a lot better purchase on your hands to kind of put some force into it. Yeah. So I'll put a little uh, in there too. So I also took a fucking note from uh, so a, one of the vehicle lockout guys that I see uh, kind of frequently, mm-hmm. and that was uh, he has this like long iron bar that he has bent to. So once he does like the set method, like you do with a regular door, so obviously he makes space between the door. Um, he sets it with uh, one of those uh, pretty much like a door. The, the I'm trying to think what it's called, Jesus. The airbag? It can be an airbag or it can be a uh wow a wedge? I'm blanking hard. A wedge. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> um, so a wedge, and then he just reaches in with his bent bar and he has like a handle at the end and then he just pops the the, the lock yes, from the end. Really common, yep. So I was like, all right, cool. I was like, I need that. So I went to fucking Home Depot and I actually purchased one of those last uh, I think it was two by two weeks ago. And I now I have one of those. I'm going to put two links in here. So there's one that I use, uh, individual tools. I'm going to link them in today's show. There's going to be a lot of links today. Oh, yeah. Um, so the one that I really like is called the Gold Finger Tool, and that'll be in the show notes today. I like it because it's it's a vehicle reach tool that goes through the gap that you create between a door, yeah. a car door, and a door frame. Um, and it reaches in and it does things. Uh, I like because it's semi-rigid, meaning you can bend it so it's like a long, straight bar. And you can put kind of mm-hmm. one elbow bend in the middle at like a 10 degrees. And it get in there and it can push buttons, pull buttons, open handles, things like that. Um, yeah. But you can also bend it and store it flat. And you can even roll it up and put it in a, in a medium-sized uh, second-line gear bag if you want to. I don't, but if you mm-hmm. want to, you can do that. The only problem with that is because it's semi-rigid, it's not like super rigid. It's mm-hmm. tough to take something that, like, you know, the phrase pushing rope, like, like an yeah. impossible task. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, so, I've done. <laughs> uh, so the problem with something that's semi-flexible or not super rigid is that it's hard to push items. So if in your vehicle entry you have determined that your uh, uh, your your target of your attack is a button that you need to push forward into or push down onto, sometimes mm-hmm. when you get that semi-flexible tool, it kind of wavers a little bit. And when it gets ah. down on that object and you push, it kind of slips off. Like this, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. There's that so too. So I love the Goldfinger tool, but it's just a little bit not rigid enough. So Sparrow's actually has, I think it's a new item. Sparrow has a vehicle entry kit that comes with just an airbag and a long and rigid reach tool. And it's fucking awesome. Mm. I love it. 
I have to look that up. And it's not very expensive either, which is great. I mean, be careful with the pricing out there. Uh, there's an underdoor tool that keeps popping up on Instagram. I think it's from Pick Pals, maybe. Uh, kind of. No, nothing against like, them if they are listening, but I usually don't go to them for my stuff. I, I've never gone to them. I mean, no offense either, but here's here's why. They said usually ninety nine dollars for this underdoor tool. Today seventy dollars, and Sparrow <laughs> has it for thirty. Yeah, so, be careful out there. If yep. Price in a lock picking world, price does not equal effectiveness or quality. Nope. Get a second opinion <laughs> until you have the experience, I suppose. Or me- message me or Sky Pirate or Just a Civvy yeah. or Hockey Goalie, who I've interviewed before. Yeah, 39 yeah. bucks for Sparrow's uh, vehicle entry kit. It comes with uh, a nice, solid, long reach tool and an airbag and maybe one or two other things I can't see here. Uh, and a wedge, too. Protective sleeve? No, we don't need those. <laughs> Old school top of door knob lock puller. Really? What is? Let me take a zoom in here. What is that? I don't see that anywhere. They probably just got some uh, some old school film. <laughs> That's what old Deviant Olaf uses. I was like, wow. The over Super. door attack? Yeah, over a door attack. Man. I was like, oh, that's, that's impressive. That is um, I, I actually think there was... I got a post oh, it. I saw a dude, a locksmith for a hotel room, and for some reason, the under door didn't work. <clears throat> like, something prohibited it from working. I think it was... Um, oh, it's one I of those, they... uh, the crash guard. Yeah, whatever happened on the on the interior side of the door, it prevented the underdoor from working. And so he actually went through the peephole, like unscrewed it, <laughs> and went through the peephole with a vehicle reach tool and bent it down. To, I think the doorknob opened up was the problem. Or the door latch, the door handle on the inside of the door opened up, not down. So he pulled on it and it wasn't moving. So they went through the peephole, went through and pulled it up, I think. Wow. Anyways, I'll I'll send you the article and I'll uh, if I can if I can find it, I will put the, sh- the links to that into the show notes. That's thoroughly impressive. That's going to be a hard one to find that article. Oh. <sighs> So that's third line gear. For me, it's the same thing. It's vehicles, um, but the types of items that are in my third line gear. Also, so that covers long items, heavy items, uh, items that don't fit in your pockets or in your bags. I also mm-hmm. um, expand that into backup items. Uh, yep. key tri- a lot of times it'll be my key tryout sets. I don't want to carry around 1,000 different Ford Crown Vic keys in a Ziploc bag. <laughs> yeah. So that stays in my vehicle. Um, and that's usually stuff that I will, spe- I will need specific info that that's specifically on that target. This item will be used. So I have yep. my main items that kind of is my loadout. And then I have specialty items that I need to know either ahead of time or on scene to go back and get them that that's the, that's the target. Yeah. Um, quick set has a really cool, uh, tryout key sets, 250 keys, 256, I think. Ow. And it's for the smart key sets and it's, it's half cut. So if you have a key that's cut one 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 and a key that's cut two 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 two, they have a key that hits everything in the middle there. And so everything one two one two one two one two one two, all those different combos are all covered by the one that's 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5. Does that make sense? Wow. So yeah. So it's taken yeah, yeah. thousands of different key bidding codes and yeah. reduced it down that's, to like two hundred. So that's still a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> that and is a lot, dude. Wow. Uh, it's not. I have a video. I, I I tried editing it, and I just I had bad luck. So I'm getting back into it now. Um, I'll try and post that soon. But I tried it, and it wasn't bad, really. If they come in little sets of ten keys per each key ring, and there's like <laughs> five, maybe twenty five sets of key rings, which is not terrible. And you can go through a set in like sixty yeah. seconds. So you think if you're moving quick, you try a key. No, try a key. No, try a key. No. That's 10 keys in about a minute, and there's right. 20 sets of that, so maybe 20 minutes. Depending on your urgency, that might be your best option. Wow. Yeah, because smart keys, like, okay, I'm not going to give, like, a huge amount of, like, no, praise go for to, it. To, to, to a quick set necessarily for the smart key, because I have I have gotten past smart keys, and there are some decent, I think there's only about two bypass methods on the market, non-destructive. I've seen a couple of destructive methods. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, they've made a decent, they've made a decent lock where it's not like I can, I, for a random quick set that I, I think I've run until about four quick sets that I was able to 
to like bully into opening about and it usually only takes about a minute <laughs> so for for most average uh, quick sets so and it's really just uh yeah it's they're not really all that great but the quick sets i think they've actually done a decent job as far as the average well obviously the average criminal's not fucking picking locks anyway yeah. so really that's not it's, that doesn't really that's matter a, yeah that's a fallacy it's yeah a fraction it's super, of a percent it's it is super funny that a lot of people seem to think that after they're taught how to pick locks mm -hmm. it's the first thing they think of they're like oh my god i need to go change the locks on my house i was like yeah your lock probably is shitty at your house but i promise right. you that's not the way they're getting in <laughs> much better just locking your doors and windows every night than you are yep. getting a new lock yep and they also don't know you can also get locks repinned and not instead of spending i don't know 300 bucks on a medico or something like that with your shitty on your shitty hung door which is still going to get fucking bypassed <laughs> with your 300 dollar lock it's either that or i've seen some some pretty gnarly ass destructive methods too like especially for people that rock composite doors uh, i think it was Ed, ed's manifesto he posted guys that were just taking blow torches to the fucking doors and reaching right in and opening doors i was like holy fuck man mm -hmm. <laughs> criminals are always, always ahead of the curve when um when i hit the real lotto or the proverbial work my ass off lotto either way i'll start <laughs> expanding my courses into destructive entry and there's so much there that's so unique and special that i'd really like to start getting out there um but that's just not my flavor for now i i know <laughs> of it um and i know how to do a lot of it i just i'm trying to fill out the little niche that i've carved right now first but yeah there's yeah really cool stuff in a destructive world really cool mm -hmm. have you Absolutely. seen that i'm gonna send you a link uh have you seen that blade entry tool blade entry tool be able to tell you here in a second as soon as i get it i'm googling it kinetic bombardment destiny 2 There might be a little pause here while I search for this, but my audience, I think, has grown to understand that. <laughs> Come on. All right, that's in my text messages. I know who I texted it to. Give me a second. I got you. Do you know what I'm talking about, though? I, I don't know if I do or not. Uh, I think once I see it, I'll be able to tell you definitively. All right, there he is. I sent it to him a week ago. Let me scroll up in our message. It is a kinetic tool. It looks like a, uh, looks like kind of like a chainsaw. And at the end of what would be the chainsaw, like the cutting edge, there is a blade, like just a big, like a, like the size of a fucking ham sandwich, just a big metal blade. And it's it's like uh, as if you're putting the crust of the sandwich up against the door. And okay. it's piston driven and. Oh, you put blank cartridges in the back of the gun and you put that blade up against the door frame, pull the trigger and the explosion from the blank cartridge pops yeah. that blade forward. So it's a destructive so it's, entry tool. So um, it's almost like a, it's almost like a, I got a it. slightly larger ram set. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you know what a ram set is. It's a, it's a, it works the same way. You put a blank in uh lockpick lock picking lawyer uses it all the fucking time. We'll get like a really nice fucking thick lock. And it'll get yeah, up, it'll take yes. a fucking ramp yep. to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh it, it's that. It's a big ass one of those. If you go to kineticbreaching.com, uh you can take a look at it. It looks super fucking cool. And I want one. Sorry, let me rephrase that. I need one right now. <laughs> I need uh, <laughs> But I don't know if you're I don't want to get too political, but it's funny how the phrase we care about Americans, so we only sell this to government, not Americans. <laughs> that's wild. It's like that's not how any of that works. Wait, I don't. <laughs> you're missing something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't want only one side having the monopoly on anything. That's the well, fucking problem. You say that, right? Yeah. We I say don't think we like know. America. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of uh, a lot of circular logic there that people don't work their way through. Yeah. Anyways, I don't want to get down that path. We're here to talk about, <laughs> shit, not about the end of the world. Not yeah. Not boog talk. Not yet. Yeah. This this uh, this tool actually looks very familiar to. Uh, so I got invited to um, a like breaching seminar here on Bragg before mm -hmm. I got back from deployment. I'll try and find it on my Google Mail. Um. Let's see. Another awkward silence for the listeners. Ramset, I'm going to put that in today's show notes as well. 
Yeah, Ram said it's static. like eighty. Uh, I think it was eighty nine bucks. I think it was mm-hmm. not bad. Let's see who is it from. Man, I have so many fucking links I got to put in today's article. That's good though. It's good for the audience. <laughs> Of course, most of this will fall in your third line gear. I would not walk around with a ram set on my belt or a. No, it's it's ram. huge. He, yeah, half half of these things I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't actually carry on me. This is for very specific purposes. I know for uh, for guys that do the like they're doing it on the job, and the, like your job is being. Each man is different. So I've, I've, I'm here for that one specific purpose. So as long as it doesn't, you know, take me out of the fight completely, then I don't mind carrying it. Yeah, this came from... I'm trying to find the name of this. Let me open this up. Uh, uh, San Tactical. That's what it was. S-A-N Tactical dot com so they have something very very similar to that so theirs is yeah it's piston driven as well but it's a, i think it's electric though so it's super duper quiet so basically they just put oh damn i see it you, you find it yeah and they have it like attached to like a backpack so you can literally like just press or like unsnap one fucking buckle and the whole thing falls off your back so after you reach and you can get right into the stack yeah uh so i was Teaching a one-day entry course, uh, it was just too fast to get people to understand non-destructive entry, um, a good baseline across the board to take that and grow with it. It was a good right. introduction to everything, but it just it left you hanging on a little bit. The two-day mm-hmm. course is good, um, but it's hard, and I can get people to show up for a Saturday and a Sunday. Um, mm-hmm. But if you're not teaching to a government crowd, you still have to worry about people's day jobs and pricing and travel yeah. and days off. So three days is almost too much to get people to manage their lives and that, you know, travel and training and all that stuff in two days. It does. It's still, again, I'm kind of beating a dead horse in two days. It doesn't make a lot of sense for me to do the non-destructive stuff and go, here's how you do this destructive thing. And that destructive thing. Like I just, I don't have enough time to do non-destructive in two days. (laughs) Yeah. I'm giving you everything and every single class, there's something I can't get to. Like every single yeah. class, I'm like, oh, I wanted to show them that tool, didn't get to it. Um, even though we have free time at the end, it's still like, let's go back and touch on this. Great. Let's go back and touch on that. Great. Hey, let's do a scenario. Great. And still, I can't get to everything. So again, once I hit the proverbial lotto, um, <laughs> yeah, I'll be teaching with a, a lot more destructive stuff. But that looks really cool, that sand tool. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, uh, technology is very, very frightening these days <laughs> that's cool and it takes it takes these doors out in like fucking seconds like why would like if you once you see something like that um obviously i think that's a very <laughs> you I, I think it would be better for swat teams versus you know i won't say it, there's no use militarily but it's SWAT's very specific. It's from point A to point B versus I'm moving through the jungle. I'm moving through really harsh terrain, very harsh weather where that point. shit like that can get fucking destroyed before you can get on target. So I'm not sure how much I would trust in that <laughs> per se. Yeah. But, and our, our philosophy kind of speaks through that too, which is know what you're getting and know what you're using it for and know yeah. what your application will be. And as long as they all match up, go for it. You're good to go. Uh, yeah, so third line. Oh, so here's something that goes in my third line gear, which is uh, keyway decoding tools and key cutting tools. I don't bring any of that stuff on scene with me. Really? Uh, so that doesn't have a home in my, obviously, my first line gear. I'm not going to carry a key cutting tool in my pocket. Right. Uh, I could fit something in my second line gear, but there's, uh, that's the purpose for that is much more administrative. There, there is a time for to say, okay, we can't get in this way. We can't get in that way. Oh, I have a camera. I can shove in the keyway, take it out. I can cut a key and we'll get in. Yeah. But um, because so much of that same skill set is administrative, um, it's just it's not an item that lives in my first or second line gear. It's something that stays either yeah. in the car or at home. 
And honestly, if I'm if I'm cutting keys at that point, you might as well just call a fucking locksmith. Because yeah. <laughs> that's that's kind of an area I would do my damnedest to stay away from because that's providing a service. And that's usually where a lot of guys that either teach lock picking or whatever, they'll get hemmed up really easy because the the line between being a locksmith versus you know teach someone lock picking is the ability to provide a service. So if I'm not a locksmith, I'm not licensed, I'm sure as fuck not cutting keys for your fucking door. Yeah. <laughs> That's just me. So yeah. I do teach a lot. I mean, I teach, I teach mainly to civilians, although individual military and first responder people will show up to classes um, as mm-hmm. students. Um, but in, in the self-sufficiency world, that stuff's really fucking cool. Like yeah, if, you manage, sure. if you manage your own business or if you manage your own homestead or farm, that could be a big deal. If you're like, oh, yeah. Oh, I have this building and that building and this barn and that barn. Wouldn't it be great if they all were key to like, yeah. Right. How much does that cost? Oh, fuck. So if you can take the cost of key cutting and bidding and install and, and you know, all that stuff, if you can take that cost and cut it in half. Yeah. That makes sense to cut your own keys, you know, depending on what type of things you manage. Agreed. I, 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 I gotta say, that's probably the one skill set in this. I'm sure there's other things that I'm not as, as good at either. Like decoding is not like my forte. I have to actually get much, much better at decoding. I'd actually probably have to take a fucking class from you to get fucking better at decoding. So um, my sec, the, my part two class, right now the first first class, I'll let you finish that, but I had to interrupt because I'm almost done with my whiskey. So my manners are going. <laughs> of course, two, once I launch it, is probably going to be uh, field key generation. Ooh. So we'll that, that'll be a, that'll be a good fucking class yeah that's uh cutting keys I, I i i've never tried my hand at it so i can't say you know somebody's like oh yeah cut this key like yeah sorry dude fucking never done it <laughs> so it's definitely and, something i'd have to get into and again you also i mean the training is part of it too how much funding do you have how many key blanks do you want to have laying around how many failures do you want to pay for um yeah and how much time do you have even if you had all the money in the world, how much time do you have to dedicate to learning basically a new science and a new, um, uh, what would you call it? Uh, technical skill. Yes. It's, so it's not lock picking. It's a completely other, it's a manufacturing <laughs> skill. Different. It's completely different. It is valuable as all hell, but yeah. it's like, holy shit. Like I see some dudes do it and they do it quickly. And I'm just like, holy shit. But these are like, master level locksmiths that are like, yeah, I could fucking cut this fucking medico key on a fucking oh, a let beer me take a look at that. Cool, oh, okay, <laughs> six, eight, seven, two, five, you got it. Click, 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 click. Yeah. Here you go. I, I am not know that the level, fucking but... bidding values in their fucking head. I'm just like, that's insane. That's such an, a fucking insane skill. I, I can tell you it's doable. So I, I just had a phone call with someone the other day. Who was it? Um, oh, my, my assistant. Um, one of the assistants for my courses. Uh, he runs all the admin for my page. He was on one of my episodes recently. Uh, Bubbers is his name. <laughs> so I told him, I asked him if there's any skill set he's lacking in. And he said, well, you know, I'm pretty good with this, pretty good with that. And I said, listen, if you want, here's something you could probably spend some time on, which is uh, key generation. And we both talked about the same thing. We're like, it's, it's a big chunk of info to bite off on. It takes time. It takes money. It takes resources. Um, it's a new science. Well, not new to the world, but it's something you have to pick up, which is new to you. But I did yep. tell him this. I said, listen, I was terrified of that. For years and years, I was like, oh, key generation. That's so cool. Not going to learn it too much. But when I finally sat down and I was like, I was like, this week, next week, the week after, this is all dedicated to key cutting. Uh, the first day, I was like, what the fuck is a Schlage key? What the fuck is a quick set key? How am I ever <laughs> going? How am I ever going to figure that out? And 10 minutes later, for the rest of my life, I'll never forget. This is a quick set key. This is a Schlage key. Boom. Done. Problem solved. Like it's yeah. <laughs> once once you do it, it quickly becomes less terrifying. Like really quickly, okay. it's doable. You can learn it, um, but you have to dedicate the time to it. And there's I'll, so many brands too. Holy hell, so many brands, so many brands. And then on top of that, Schlage. I know Schlage is huge for it too. They have different like key configurations. So like all the lock faces look. They have like 26 different lock faces. I'm just like, oh my fucking god, like. The guy that knows all that shit in his head, like good fucking good on you. Great. <laughs> and again, what's your what's your return on investment, right? I'm gonna put exactly. in thousands of hours so that I can use this almost never in the field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so your time's much better spent playing that percentage game and going fucking ninety percent of doors, either in their government or in bureaucracies or you know private residences. 
We're yep. going to fucking bypass that latch. Boom. Problem solved. Yep. Makes sense. Uh, so another thing that I'll, I'll, I'll backtrack a little, well, actually it's a lot of it at this point. Uh, um, I actually started carrying different, uh, different types of picks. So, um, for when I was overseas, I ran, uh, I actually ran into some, I ran into a few, quite a few disc detainers. And then I also ran into, uh, dimple locks. So slightly, slightly oh, okay. different, not much different. So dimple locks are, they're still, um, Pin tumbler locks. There's there's still pin tumblers. They're just uh, yep, nope. Uh, whoa. Sorry, are you there? Yeah, here. Yeah, someone my someone called my phone. And I it just no but yeah, there's still pin tumbler locks. Uh, so it's it, it's the same exact motion. So you set pins and then it opens. It's that's it's exactly the same. But you need specific picks in order to do that. So for like my fanny pack, if I'm carrying a large fanny pack, or I'm just carrying my bag. Altogether, I carry different types of picks. I do have my disc detainer, my disc detainer pick, and I also have my uh, my dimple picks as well. So, just for guys that are listening, uh, depending on where you are, so that's part that's part of your job. If you are breaching or if you're uh, using, you're, you're trying to gain entry anywhere, you have to do some some studying on the area that you're going to be operating in. So that's that even goes for. Uh, different cities because i went to uh washington dc uh, about two weeks ago mm-hmm. and guess what a lot of these places are running fucking medicos fucking mm-hmm. you're, you're running some very high tier locks like they're not running your like one of the mill fucking quick sets they're fucking running some they spend some fucking money on this stuff however this is where a lot of other stuff comes into play too because a lot of stuff is electronical so mm-hmm. you run into a lot of door king systems you and if anybody that watches deviant olaf uh, knows a lot of those things run the fucking same keys and you can fucking bypass them by bridging connectors. So yeah. well, it was the, the first thing I bought, maybe as soon as I got back from deployment, I bought one of those key sets. Mm-hmm. And I was like, boom, fucking door king. You, you, you see all these stuff, CK one, two, threes. Uh, there's a, there's a whole bunch of them. There's even a fucking, uh, the old Ford keys. So the old Chevy keys that pretty much like all taxis used and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, it's like having those on the side. That's in my my second line or my fucking you know my bag, my go bag. Right. So that's so, not key cutting, and that's not lock picking. Yeah. So that is its own little bubble that you can modularly add into your entry set if you want. And that doesn't requ- like like you and I probably both discovered some of that. Uh, you watch these lectures and these videos, and in two hours you can be up to speed with at least knowing what to do to get started. You might not be an expert, mm-hmm. but you know how to get started. So, yeah, uh, key to like systems are pretty fucking cool, and it's it's a little terrifying at first when you watch the video and they're like, "This system, this key goes to that, and it's cut like this," and you go, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" But by the end, you're like, "Oh, okay, yeah, I got it. That thing." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. And then uh, it, it's crazy how far it goes. Like it's a, it's a it's a, a, a truly massive. The security realm in general is so fucking massive. I'm mm-hmm. um, just on the physical side alone. Like especially when you start bypassing. Um, you know, Rex systems and stuff like that. Like that's stuff that your average person would be like, holy shit, are you fucking James Bond? Like, <laughs> and then you realize the dynamic behind it is actually super fucking simple. And these places like these massive, you know, enterprises or corporations are entirely too lazy to dedicate the money to ensure their, their physical security. Or I know a guy that has the answer to why that happens. FYI. Really? And what, is, yeah. and what does he say? He, he has a book that's coming out in about hopefully 30 to 60 days on that exact topic for why bureaucracies work the way they do and why they don't work at all. Ever. I always say this one thing. I was like, security is never enough until it's too much. Or it's always too much until it's not enough. Excuse me. Uh, so it's like, oh, so expensive. And then it's like... Hmm. In the book that I already have published, I say it is a balancing act between effectiveness and efficiency. So you can have a really effective security system, but if it takes you like an hour to get through all the different layers of security to get to your desk, it's not very efficient. Right. So you have to balance that speed and ease of access with your security, and it's always this fucking seesaw act. Mm-hmm. I would also say as well, they. The, I, I would think the way that they justify it, I'm try, I, I would try and think about it in the way they think about it, is that even if someone were to bypass the system, would the damage that they cause cost me more than actually upgrading everything to the standard that it would need to be? And if it doesn't, 
if that risk doesn't out, outweigh that reward, then I have no problems here. Mm -hmm. So that's from that standpoint, I can be like, uh, okay, but <laughs> it's like, depends on who's trying to fuck your shit up too. So obviously on the cybersecurity realm, I don't know if you listen to uh, like Darknet Diaries or anything like that, but, uh, you know, rogue, you know, rogue cyber groups fucking snatching 80 plus million dollars from, from banks. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's worth getting your security taken care of. <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, so I asked you on because I wanted to set up my a little fanny pack with some entry tools, and it's kind of a 1.5 line gear. It's not second line where I'm like, hey, I'm going to make entry. Let me grab my fanny pack. But it's also not first right. line like, hey, I have it on me every day. Um, so I, I have a really cool one that I use. A Spiritus Systems has a really nice fanny pack. I love it. That's, that's Why are you laughing? That's the one I use. Man. <laughs> <laughs> this Rudy Systems fanny pack is what I use. Man. I love it. I fucking love it. Um, yep. And I have little Ziploc bags, like the sandwich size ones. And within yes. that sandwich sized Ziploc, I put stuff for my dog. So I have a couple <laughs> rolled up sheets of paper towels. I have uh, wet wipes. I have um, gloves. And then I have a large gallon size Ziploc bag that's folded up, put into the smaller Ziploc. So that if we're in public and she takes a dump or a piss on the floor, I can go, okay, great. No, lay down next to me. Don't move. I'll take out a little. I'll unzip fanny pack. Take out the Ziploc. Open up my trash Ziploc bag. Get my gloves on. Wipe up the mess. Put it in the big Ziploc. Sanitize the area. Wipe it down again. Put it in the Ziploc. Close the Ziploc. Cool. Trash contained. Yeah. So that's why I carry a fanny pack now. Um, I don't carry it everywhere I go. But um, if me and Arrow are going to be walking around in a place for quite a while, and I'm worried about a bathroom incident, then I'll. Uh, I'll pop the fanny pack on, but it's a great place to also put some cool entry, entry tools. Yeah. So I'll be putting that together soon. Absolutely. And there, yeah, I've, I've used that more. I actually went to my, I'll say your 1.5. <laughs> so I actually went more to the 1.5 than the two more often than not. Um, it's very rare that I'll actually carry a backpack when doing things, uh, unless it's already on my kit and I'm where mm -hmm. I'm working. Um, but yeah, I, I'll always have that fanny pack for whatever reason. So if that's for administrative, if it's for, you know, for medical, or if I'm dedicating it specifically to entry tools, then it'll be, it'll be set up a very specific way. So, um, there are slightly longer items that I'll always have pushed to the backside of the ones. Cause it'll keep it's, it'll keep its rigidity and its shape and we'll start folding in and doing this weird, like clumpy shit when you start putting too much shit in there. Um, two, I always have a, so I, I obviously, I'm sure you're aware of the glow in the dark fucking like the disc and stuff like that. Yeah. You so, saw me on the other day. Yeah. So I, on the inside of the, you know, the spirit, spirit systems family pack, they have pile tape or so far Velcro for the non military folk. Um, and then I have uh hook tape on the back end of that and I'll slap that in there so I can obviously see what's inside the bag if I need to with a low light solution. And then, uh, after that, yeah, then after that, you can start just layering shit up so you can do uh, your cone picks, your picks. Um, and then I would definitely say probably put like a small piece of tape around it, something that's easily terrible, maybe masking tape or something to keep them together. And so that way you don't get obviously that that jingling and everything's kind of flowing around. Now you're looking for shit for your bag. Um, so definitely for organization purposes, I would definitely put like maybe like a single roll of like masking tape, something easily terrible around the items that you use. Um, so everything kind of stays put and it's easier to find shit. I love it. I'm excited to uh, post some photos of how I deck that out. In the for sure. All right, brother, what else you got for us? Cause we're probably close to wrapping up. Hmm trying to think why don't you go ahead and give all your plugs for how we can find you and then after that if we've got anything else you can that pops up in your mind we can cover that all right uh so for the people that want to find me obviously on uh, instagram uh my handle is sky pirate actual let me see if there's there might be an underscore in there but i'll, I'll double check to make sure that that's actually the case i don't screw anybody yep so sky pirate underscore actual for the people listening uh, if you want to, uh, you can also find me on YouTube with the same exact handle. Uh, I would say for 
I'm going to leave my, I'm going to leave my personal email out of that. <laughs> but, uh, both of those are open. So if anybody wants to, you know, drop a question in DM, super duper open to questions for, uh, just give me a little bit of time. Cause I do work a day job. Um, that's pretty much the places they can find me, uh, most frequently. So, uh, another thing that I was, uh, having the works here, actually, I just thought of, uh, so me and Matt or, I'll say Seer Pick. Mm-hmm. We were actually had an idea rolling. We we're gonna come up with a five dollar uh, bypass slash entry kit. Yeah. Uh, so we have that coming up. We kind of had a a little small halt on that, but getting uh, travelers hooks and stuff like that are like ninety eight cents. It's it, a lot of this stuff is super duper easy to find, uh, especially at hardware stores. So uh, we'll be coming out with that pretty soon. Oh, so just look out for that. So that'll include uh, a few bypass or loading options uh, and also teach some people how to make. Uh, so I actually have some uh, like paint scrapers, uh, like plastic ones. So they're harder plastic, so they can actually take a little bit more abuse. And a lot of these are either like 85 cents, 98 cents, and you have yourself a bypassing tool. So it's that's the that's the, the game right now is to give cheap but effective options for people that maybe can't afford, you know, super high end, uh, bypassing tools. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and beyond that, I'm trying to think of anything else that's going on. I would like to extend, uh, an invitation, especially for like the EMS, uh, Leo's or just any, anybody military law enforcement, uh, to reach out because I definitely like to teach people that will use this on the everyday, uh, everyday good guys on the job. So I think that's I think that's all about I, all I got today, bud. Cool, man. I was this is good core content. I can I like the stuff that I can always refer back to. Uh, and three lines of gear is something I get asked a lot about. Hey, I want to buy this tool. How do I buy it? Where do I use it? How do I store it? So this is a mm-hmm. great answer to that. Hopefully. Absolutely. All right, brother. Well, thanks for coming on uh, for the rest of everybody out there. Thanks so much for checking us out. Uh, support us in any way that you feel fit. Some of the free ways are easy. Uh, just let your, your friends know about this content. If you think they'll find some value in it, give us a like and a subscribe and a review on whatever platform you can. Uh, if you want to hop on Patreon, patreon.com backslash U T A C. That's a great way to support this show. It does cost quite a bit of money behind the scenes. If you want a high quality dog, go check out fortresscanine.com and let them know I sent you. You'll get a discount and in return, he will uh, support the show as well. And my new tactical lock picking book is out. We mentioned it a few times. You can go over to my website to get the direct links to that. We have a physical copy and we have uh, digital copies out there. And feel free to reach out to Sky Pirate or myself with any questions for follow up. And you can email me at my new email address, which is pat at utac.io. Thanks so much for checking us out, everybody.